My name is Jan Benham, founder of the Institute of Aromatherapy and Aroma Shop. I'm here today to talk about hydrosols or hydrolats or floral waters, whatever you may call them. Now these distilled uh, floral waters or herbal waters are from the use of a distilled machine, distillation. And they were technically uh, recently known more as a byproduct. So people would want to get the essential of rose, and they would also get, as a byproduct, rose water. This is more recent. But in the past, it used to be that the rose essential oil was the byproduct of the floral water. So they're 100% pure from the plant being put into the um, still and what you're just getting up is water coming through and going through a condenser and then you're left with um, a floral water which smells of the essential oil and floating on top in most cases, not every case, you get the essential oil. So there are two different components, they have similar properties but uh, they, you do use them differently. So let's look at rose water. Um, rose water is used a lot in culinary cooking in the Med Middle East. So if you go to Turkey and buy Turkish Delight, that is made, the smell is from rose water that has been made with. Then if you go to an Egyptian household and have uh, dinner with them, you'll generally be served a water that has had rose or neroli hydrosol added to it and that is what they drink instead of wine so they have this and it makes a lot of sense hydrosols or hydrolats are antiseptic and antibacterial so if you drink this along with some dodgy meat or whatever there's less chance of you getting food poisoning so the the floral water of rose, the 100% rose I'm talking about, is being used, has been used for centuries in Middle Eastern households. So uh, a little warning here, you see floral waters for sale in the health food stores and these are not, most of them are not technically hydrolats. They're usually water that has had the pure essential oil added to it and they, they use a solubilizer to make disperse the essential oil throughout the water. So they sell these then as floral waters. They are not hydrolots, they are not hydrosols and they should certainly not be taken internally. So, you know, to be aware, ask your manufacturer or your supplier is this a hundred percent distillate? So they're not all as they are expected. I've distilled many floral waters and I have just poured out a few of my favorites. So um, first of all, sometimes when you do a distillation, you might get a few little plant parts in the water too. Usually what happens if I'm going to resell it, then I um, sift out and put it through a filter so that there's no external plant parts. Now, with the um, distillation of, um, one of the distillations I love to do is a strawberry. Here is a strawberry. It's lovely, it does smell of strawberries. This was distilled last July, which was at the end of the harvest last year, from organic strawberries and what effect it has on the skin is it has a, um, a clearing effect, a cleansing effect. It's a very much a tonic. It's also antiseptic. But the only problem with this one, we can't take this internally because we do have to add some form of preservative to it. So I add Lucidal, which is a, um, a preservative made from bacteria, believe it or not. And it helps just to stop because strawberry hydrosol it doesn't have such a long shelf life, there is a possible chance of mold growing at some point during the process. It is, um, this is almost, it's getting on for three quarters of a year old. It's coming to the end of its time, but it's still useful and it still can be used. And I'm looking forward to the next harvest. 
The other essential, uh, sorry, the other hydrosol I, I make a lot of is cucumber. And cucumber is really valuable in skincare. As we know, we can put cucumbers on our eyelids and to tighten the skin around our eyes. Um, so use as a tonic, toning lotion. Um, you can use as is or mix with other products and essential oils to make a nice toning lotion. It makes an awesome cleanser for the skin and a refreshing tonic for the skin as well. Some people try to put, I know I tried myself, to put just cucumbers and make your own cucumber water and then add it to your creams, but that goes moldy. The beautiful thing about distillation of the product is that, first of all, the copper distill, um, the copper itself helps to preserve, helps to, um, it actually acts like a disinfectant in a way. It also imparts a sweet smell to the hydrosol. So uh, a copper distilled um, floral water or hydro hydrosol, I should stay away from floral water, um, is sweeter and lasts longer than a hydrosol that has been distilled in a, a stainless steel vessel. So, um, and this is just a high, this is one, just one of my many stills. Um, I am going to be showing you in a few moments a clip from when I distilled cucumber back in 2014 with a little tiny tabletop still, it's smaller than this one, and I think you'll find it interesting. This shows you how the process is in a nutshell. So that's cucumber hydrosol. It tones the skin, it refreshes, um, it all of them. Every single hydrosol does have an antiseptic effect upon the skin, so it's all really a matter of preferences. If you look at the attributes of what the essential oil does, like the essential oil rose, um, then the the hydrosols do have a similar prop do have similar properties. They're just not as strong. They can be taken internally unless they've had lucidel or another preservative added. So uh, when you're talking about internally, we're talking about a teaspoon with a child or a tablespoon with an adult once or twice a day. Very good for the gut and the internal system. So then we have um, witch hazel. Um, witch hazel doesn't necessarily, it's, it's herby and it's distilled from the witch hazel tree, the hamalus. And I use this and they use this a lot in uh, medicinally for hemorrhoids, uh, bruising. Um, wounds, uh, varicose veins. I use it as my hair tonic, which I talked about in an earlier podcast. So there are, um, you'd have to read about them all. Now, to be aware when sometimes something is first distilled, sometimes there's what they call, um, a, a, I'm trying to think of the word, but it's a burn smell. And that eventually does go away when it is uh, the top is left open for a little while. So before we go on, I'm going to show you a clip on how we distilled cucumber hydrosol in my little still back in 2014. Hello, this is Jan Benham from the Aroma Shop, and today we are going to distill cucumber. This is cucumber that is grown in our garden and here it is and we're just going to chop it up into pieces and it's going to be direct distillation which means we're going to put it in with some spring water the spring water is already in heating up and place it in We're now going to put the gooseneck on top of the still. As you can see the temperature is already rising. And hook up the condenser to the gooseneck. It's a copper still, which I find makes the best hydrosol. Basically what we're waiting for is the temperature to reach 100 degrees centigrade. 
the product, the plant or the herbs or, what, or flowers, whatever you're using, is placed directly into the water. There is a little um, screen at the bottom to stop direct contact of the plant to the heat. And uh, for steam distillation, this actually turns into a steam distiller where we can put the plant just in the upper part of the chamber here so that the steam can rise, break down. So we use this for, say, lavender, um, lemon balm, but for cucumber I find it's best in the direct distillation. So the essential oil and the water, the steam water will come, or steam, not the water, the steam and the um, essential oil from the plant will raise up, including, that will be the hydrosol, into the top, come through this copper tubing here and into the condenser. And what we have here is cold water running through from the base, running up, and then the excess water, hot water, will be coming out, condensing the essential oil. So I'm now going to just turn on the water slightly. So now we have the condenser working now. Once the temperature reaches 100 degrees centigrade, then the steam will start to come through here. And what we will come, uh, what will be coming out of this tube here is the uh, hydrosol, which we will capture into the brown amber bottle. So that was a little explanation of how distillation works. So talking again about the individual properties of some of my favorite hydrosols is, for example, Cucumber hydrosol is refreshing, cooling, astringent, hydrating, tones and firms the skin. It can use directly on the skin as a toner or as a hydrating spritzer and can also be used as part or oil of the water phase for creams and lotions. It has a very long shelf life and it's also used in skincare masks as well as in room and body sprays. And just a, this is just a little thing. And then rose hydrosol is relaxing. It's antiseptic. It has cooling properties, and it's used for so many applications in skincare. Again, can be used as part of the water component of a cream or a lotion. It can be used in masks, and so on. Strawberry hydrosol is refreshing. Smells wonderful and tones and firms the skin. Again, it can be used directly on the skin as a toner or as a hydrating spritzer and can be used as part or oil of the water phase for lip creams and lotions. And it can also be used in room and body sprays, but for external use only. And then we come last but not least, and there are, you know, lots of hydrosols out there, lavender, uh, uh, juniper berry, rosemary, I used to go crazy uh, trying out what I could distill and what would come out and what wouldn't come out. So witch hazel, so it's um, used medicinally. It was a plant extract widely used for medicinal purposes by the Ameri American Indians and is used in many healthcare products. Um, it's mainly used uh, externally on sores, bruises and swelling. It's used in skincare, it's an astringent, and it can be used to help a remedy for psoriasis, eczema, aftershave product applications, ingrown toenails, and also to help prevent sweating of the face. It helps with cracked or blistered skin and treats, helps treat insect bites, poison ivy, and as a treatment for varicose veins and hemorrhoids. So it's, it's found in numerous over-counter uh, remedies for hemorrhoids preparations. And it's recommended to women to reduce swelling to soothe wounds resulting from childbirth. So that is just a quick little uh, information on hydrosols and uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them on a further podcast and um, enjoy them. Again, know your essentials before you use them and also, of course, know your hydrosols before you use them. Again, be aware that floral, 
hydrosol floral waters that are sold in health food stores are usually not hydrosols. They are usually a water where a drop of the essential has been added and then a, um, a solubilizer has been added to, to, to diffuse it through the water. So it's not 100%. So do ask if, there, if it is or if it has any stabilizers added. And the shelf life, if you get it good, um, should be a, a two years. Most people suggest one year. So I do hope you enjoyed this podcast and I do enjoy doing them. And next time we will talk about something else. So wherever you are, have a great morning or a super evening and see you next time.